Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, what is up? The Kingu of Lightning is here today, bringing you guys and gals Berserk chapter reviews. Now, I am way on this one. I apologize for that, but it is what it is. I'm going to review it anyway because I'm a fan of Berserk. No shit. Now, this chapter Berserk, let's dive right into the chapter itself. First of all, even though the chapter is good in of itself, and I'll get to that obviously, I want to make a quick comment. When I see... Ricker at the end of the chapter talking about Guts and Casca and how he went off to take care of her, you know, and they went to the Fairy King uh, place. I'm like, bro, like, like when are we going to get back? Because understand that given Kentaro Miura's pacing, even though the Ricker story has been a few chapters, it's felt like forever. And I'm like, oh, like, just where's Guts? Where's Dragon Slayer? Start just swinging, like fuck it, like, like God damn it. the fucking armor, son. Where's the wolf? And I'm like, yeah, like I'm I'm fiending for guts right now. All right, I'm super fiending. So, like, it's not bad. The Rickard story isn't bad at all because Falcone is very important, obviously. But now they're moving along. Hopefully, we get to have like maybe like another chapter or two because. I'm, I'm, I'm going to assume two, two or three more chapters of this, and then we're going to be done with the, with the Rickard side story, because you have Roxas, she's on, like, the Eagles, and it, the fucking Eagles, man. The Eagles are everywhere. You can't escape them. God damn it. But he's riding an eagle at the end of the chapter, or a hawk, whatever. You want to be technical, a hawk. And he is swooping down in the full moonlight, I'm assuming he's hunting for Rickard and the Tapasha so he can kill them because he was ordered to. Now, that being said, in this chapter, we found out a few things that are fairly interesting. So, number one, we get to see combat between the Tapasha and Roxash. And Roxash is actually formless. Like, he has, like, the way it was portrayed, he had the mask on to hide his face. But he has no face. The mask is his face. So that was fairly intriguing. Like, he's a shadowless, formless apostle. And that mask is his face. So when uh, Silat, Silout, his name is, he has, he, has a, he has another name. I think it's uh, Shiwato. But I don't know what to call him. I really don't. Like, he has like five different names. So I'm going to go with Silat for now. And he basically. He cut the face portion with his blade after the Tepash, the other ones, they held him down. But what was cool about that was he actually lost motivation because he lost his face. And so he was going to come back the following, he was going to come back during nighttime to hunt down Rickard in the light of the full moon. So that was cool because we got to find out more about him as an apostle, which we don't really like. Some apostles, they get spotlight. But he was always like in the shadows and whatnot. But now we kind of get to see more of him. And that was, you know, pretty cool. And now he's, again, he's on the hunt for Ricker. So he, I'm assuming, was someone that was originally a part of the Baki Raka. Because he calls Silout the young master after he catches some of his uh, disc blades. So my assumption is that he would actually know the location of this hidden village. So when Silout says that Roxash is um, unusually persistent. I think he said some, some, something along those lines. Like, he's very persistent. Like, he'll continue to hunt no matter what. He was ordered to by locals and whatnot. So, we now know that Rickard and company, they're going to go to this hidden village in the uh, Kushan area, all right? And that's where all the Baki Raka live. And apparently, they all are taught, you know, hunting skills, and they're all, you know, lethal strikes and whatnot. And my assumption here is that, based on what's being said here, that Roxas was formerly a member of this village. So, because he's persistent when it comes to the hunt, he may continue to hunt Rickard and company even when they leave Falconia. So, I'm not... Because, again, I don't think Locus is... No, no, we know for a fact he's not a fan of his lord, his liege, being smacked across the face. So, that is like a permanent death sentence right there. The only way that's going to stop is if, is if 
the Falcon himself finds out. So, will he find out? I'm not too sure. He may already know, but who knows? Who knows? So, the story makes leaps in that sense. It makes leaps in the sense of the character, Raksash, and his, you know, and how he operates when it comes to his form, when it comes to combat and whatnot. We get more insight on that. And then it's, of course, them leaving with the Tepasha to go to this, you know, village and whatnot. And there's also a little scene that I like a lot because Rigor doesn't say much in the scene. It's him talking, you know, like having like an, an internal monologue. And he thinks, why would Griffith actually try and kill me? Like, would he really do that? And then he remembers that the White Falcon, the Griffith of old, the White Hawk, excuse me, Banner Hawk, he was always scheming and doing stuff. And we all know that Guts was a key part of his schemes. We all know that for a fact. And he remembers how the scheme that he had that failed with the princess and how, you know, like the emperor or, or the king, he saw that shit go down, I think. Or, but yeah, he was caught. He was caught, basically. And it was the downfall of the Banner Hawk. But at the same time, the Banner Hawk itself would have probably existed if not for those schemes. And that is portrayed in these pictures, not even dialogue, just the pictures. So you see the swords that are lined up like it was Griffith's schemes that led us to, you know, our demise. But at the same time, the Banner Hawk existed predominantly because of his schemes and because of Griffith himself. So I do like that. So it's, you know, Rickard's constant internal struggle with himself when it comes to Griffith. And when it comes to this whole situation. So, like, again, it it comes down to, does Griffith, is he justified in killing the Band of Hawk and attaining this power? Because he has Falconia, a safe haven for humans. He is this, you know, godly figure and ruler. And he's giving people peace and prosperity throughout the land and whatnot. Like, is he justified? Like, it's the question of, is, is Griffith truly evil? Even though he is Femto, he's also, you know, the Holy Falcon. So, so it's like, like, you know, it's that, you know, forever battle, which people always, you know, talk about when it comes to Griffith. And, you know, it's it's a very cool concept, right? Like, it's something that you're hard pressed, to, you're hard pressed to find in Shonen, but more so you find in Saint In, which honestly is why I prefer Saint In. But whatever, not just me. So, because nothing is ever that easy. Right? It's, it's, it's never, when it comes to Berserk a lot of times, it's never that simple. So, what happens now, pretty much, is the hunt. It's going to be the Tapasha trying to leave Falconia, while Raksash goes on a hunt, and he's going to try and kill them. Now, when Sila was attacked by Raksash, and he was in the shadow and whatnot, and he got him in like the stomach area, he said he was fine, but I'm not too sure about that. And there's one last thing, too. The... I forgot what his name was. Oh, Christ. But... Because it's been a long time. But the guy who fought against Guts before, the guy with, like, that weird water-controlling uh, ability, basically, like, the now janitor, but he was, like, a commander of the Kushans way back when. All right, he's there, and he actually notices that, you know, these guys, they're the uh, Baki Raka of the hidden village in Kushan. So, he may go with them as well. I'm not too sure about that. But, what is going to be interesting is to see how Erica, how she handles this whole situation where she's been given momentary peace. And now she's going to leave Falconia to go over to this hidden village somewhere like this, you know, crazy mountain area. Where not even the mystical creatures can actually attack them. Not even the spirits can attack them in this place. Because it's so secluded. And the people there are so powerful on, on a regular basis. So, again, we'll have to see how that works out. But it is going to be fascinating if Kentaro Muir sticks with the story for a bit. Which I don't think he should. Because, again, we have Guts and we have the Fairy King going on. And that, I think, is more important. Obviously, it's more important. So, that's it. The chapter overall, I'm giving him a good plus, And I will see you guys, guys later. So, King Lightning. Rate the video, comment, subscribe. Have a nice one.